Morning Star, and welcome to the January edition of Band of Brothers. Um, it is not morning for me, as you can see, but uh, it's morning for you. Or maybe it's not. I don't know. But thanks for tuning in. Um, if you don't know who I am, I'm Eric Summers, uh, the Band of Brothers coordinator for Morning Star. Um, I like to pride myself as being a men's minister, uh, as we are having ministry from my shop. Uh, <laughs> But uh, I, I've always said that the Word of God never um, cannot be put into a box. So if you're a woman, if you're a man, welcome. I am happy to have you here. Um, no major announcements from the church. Uh, just know that uh, for the men on Monday, we're going to have another uh, men's ministry that Tony is leading as well. And man, it's, it's been absolutely awesome. The first one was fantastic, and I can't wait to go to this next one. Um, I feel like this year things are changing, man. It's uh, it's going to be a good year. Um, and with that, let's go ahead and get into the Bible. Um, today I want to start out of uh, Romans 13, uh, starting about verse 8. And it says, Oh, no, oh, no one anything except to love each other. For the one who loves another has fulfilled the law. For the commandments, you shall not commit adultery, you shall not murder, you shall not steal, you shall not covet, and any other commandment are summed up in this word. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. Love does no wrong to a neighbor, therefore love is the fulfilling of the law. Beside this you know that the time, that the hour has come for you to wake from sleep, for salvation is nearer to us now than when we first believed. The night is far gone, the day is at hand, so of light. So then let us cast off the works of darkness and put on the armor of light. Let us walk properly. Now that's the message that I want to focus on today is, uh, and I've got my notes here. So. The night is far gone, and hang on, my wife is calling. Hello. Okay. Okay, just try to use your GPS. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right, sweetheart. Love you. Bye. <laughs> oh man. Uh, sorry. Um, the part that sticks out to me in that that verse. Um, or that passage is uh, the night is far gone. It's talking about the past. The past is gone. There's nothing you can do to change it. There's only the next part that says the day is at hand. Talking about living in the now. And then after that it says to walk properly. Biblically. Um, and I think that we need to quit focusing on what on what we were um, if if you were a sinner stop focusing on it if you were a, a back row Christian stop focusing on it if you were a mega church pastor back then and you're not today stop focusing on that and focus on preparation for our journey our journey is at hand now if you're on a journey right now then you've got your goal you've got your objective Jesus is guiding you but if you're kind of like me right now and you're kind of like in a preparation mode um, and you're looking for your next thing you're waiting for God to lead you down your next journey your next purpose um, and understand that the purpose of God is forever being fulfilled and it's our job to step up and fulfill that for him uh, I can preach about that all day long but um, <laughs> this is a, this time of year is always perfect uh, for this, um, it's January. We're roughly what two, three weeks in uh, to the month now, so we're starting to see the 
New Year resolutions kind of wear out. Um, and this is unfortunate because usually it takes 21 days, three weeks, something like that, to really get into a new habit, to make an action a habit, uh, good or bad. Um, and, you know, in particular to my case, um, you know, this is always a good time for, you know, people joining the gym. Uh, if you're a regular, it kind of gets annoying. Uh, but you always know three weeks in, the gym's going to go back to normal because everybody quits. And, um, and I find that the people that quit, they mostly fall off because they never had a plan to begin with. They just showed up. They, they never researched. They never prepared. Uh, they just dreamed about who they, who they were um, one day. Maybe it was who you were back in high school. Maybe it was uh, how strong you were in your 20s or your 30s. Uh, maybe it was when you were healthy. And they just expected, oh, January, January 1st turned around. Um, I'm going to wake up and go conquer uh, Rome. I don't know. Just an example. I'm going to start the journey. Uh, that's not the case. Um, it definitely wasn't the case for me. Um, some of you know that last year I had a pretty, I wouldn't say significant injury, but I had to take some time off from the gym. A lot of you guys know that I used to, man, I was a machine. I worked out in the morning, 6 a.m. jiu-jitsu, went to work, after work, went to the gym, did weights, did cardio, whatever I needed, uh, at least three to four, sometimes five times a week, um, and then twice on Saturday, no, um, or is it Sunday? But I got into this um, groove where it was like, I, the doctor told me I had to take six weeks off to, to recover and heal. I kind of didn't listen to him, like us most stubborn men. Um, so about a month after my injury, I really was like, all right, I cannot handle this. I am in pain. Uh, I mean, I was on the couch for a couple weeks. Like, it was awful. Um, so I decided I was going to take it easy, take a break. Well, the six-month mark was about November for me. And I was just like, hey, it's time to get going. All right, we'll go back. So I went back to the gym, started working out at home a little bit. Didn't have a plan. Before I knew it, it was December. Um, life happens. You know, I just I didn't stick with it. I quit. Um, so then I said, all right, I'm going to start Clean Start January 1st. I didn't even go. I didn't even go to the gym, um, and I am proud to say that after some real talks with the man upstairs, uh, I've decided to, to find a plan and to follow that plan, and now I'm on day three of it, so, you know, 19 more days left, <laughs> or whatever it is, um, but you're probably wondering, uh, that time in between where, where I was at, right? I was just dreaming about the person before the plan. I was just dreaming about that person I wanted to be. I was dreaming about the past. I was dreaming about getting back to that point where I was working out. I was crushing it. I was running. I was this. I was this strong. I was doing this in jiu-jitsu. I was beating up on people. Uh, that was based on my past before my injury. Um, and I got nowhere with it. Um, but it, it, like I said, it wasn't until after I started and I sought, I sought, like I wanted to find, I had the internal desire to find a plan that's going to work for me that I actually took that first step back into the gym. Now, you're probably like, all right, Eric, I'm tired of you talking about the gym, like whatever. Uh, how does this relate to our walk with Christ? Um, I know you're, as most Christians, I know that we're maybe not where we want to be, but just know that, um, and I think it's in Isaiah, uh, it says that when the time is right, the Lord will make it happen. Um, and this is my first point. Um, things happen when you prepare your heart for his purpose, because his purpose is coming. Just know that you have to be ready for it. Now, sure, I could have been working out months ago. But I wasn't ready. I wasn't. My body wasn't ready. My mind definitely wasn't ready. So it was one of those things like better to be patient and wait 
and have a plan perfectly come together and hopefully be executed, like I said, we're only on day three, than for me to rush into it and then a couple weeks later just fall to pieces. Um, we have to stop focusing on what was because things have changed. Uh, but God's purpose for us hasn't, right? Um, time flows through us. Now, I turned 30 this year. Now, I could have held on to my youth. <laughs> like I said, I could have kept thinking about who I was, and I wouldn't have went anywhere. Um, but I needed to shift my focus from where I was when I was 20 to now. I have to have to to let that time flow through me. I'm a more mature person, so if I try to do things when I was 20 at 30, I'm going to look like a kid. You know, not saying a 20-year-old is a kid because we all have our own purpose, but that purpose for me is outdated. My purpose in me now is continuing. And I think it was a year or two ago I talked about the tale of two C's. Um, and it was talking about talking about having things flow through you. Um, and I talked about the Sea of Galilee and the Dead Sea and compared the two. Um, you know, one's in the north, one's in the south. One is fed by many rivers and has, you know, the body water is there. And then it also pushes out to other rivers as well. It feeds towns and cities. And then the other one is fed by many rivers, but it doesn't let anything out. It just sits there and holds it, holds it all in. One is extremely prop prosperous and has some of the... Uh, supposedly some of the best fishing of uh, Israel, right? Um, some delicate, very rare fish live in that sea that where all that life is. And then the other one is so salty that nothing can even live in it. It doesn't even have plants on its banks. They say if you get into the Dead Sea, the water, if when you get in and the water is above your chest, you'll actually start to float because that's how dense the water is. And then when you get out of the sea, you can't even bathe in the Dead Sea because of all the salt and the minerals that are on your body, you actually have to use clean water to wash off. It gives the appearance of something that's clean, but when you actually get out, you're dirtier than you were. Now, my point number two is the problem that you're facing today um, and where you think you are in life, it's not how big that problem is. It's not how big that issue is. It's not how bad you were injured. It's more about how you handle it. Because that environment that you live in can be toxic. Uh, you have to let go of what was and focus on betterment now. Um, you have to focus on, you know, as Christians we need to focus on loving our neighbors. We need to focus on being that, that cornerstone for our church uh, we have to focus on adhering to the commandments. Um, and, uh, you know, um, it's hard sometimes, right? It's hard to find focus when you're not mentally prepared. Um, but that comes with rest, I think. I really think that if you can just take a step back and breathe, Focus on Jesus. Focus on preparing your heart and your mind. Um, you'll get to where you need to go. Now, talking about preparing things, um, a lot of you guys know that I've been working on uh, my dad's old Jeep. Now, when I acquired said Jeep, <laughs> it was dad's work vehicle, right? Um, it needed a lot of TLC. Uh, I'm talking like rusty, like, oh man. Um, that's a whole nother story one day, but I had Jason and I had everybody. I had a buddy from uh, Morgan McClure. I mean, just everybody helping me out with it because it was such a mess. Um, but working with multiple people, and I, I know you guys know this. This is my dirty shop, right? This is where I do all my blacksmithing work and like all the nasty, grimy um, stuff. You guys have actually seen my other shop um, because it's clean. <laughs> that's where I actually initially started filming online Band of Brothers stuff 
and uh, I have tools in both places. I have spe specialized tools for here, and then I have the clean tools over there that, you know, mild, you know, there's no grime, there's no dirt. You can pick up tools and not have your hands dirty. <laughs> uh, and I remember um, when I started working on my Jeep, I had this pair of pliers that I was using to rip up, I think it, uh, something to do with the floor. I can't remember what it was, but I had this habit of when I'm done work, I'm done work. Like I'll put my tools up, but like I don't tidy up the mess. Um, so I knew that I put those pliers in that Jeep. I knew I did. But I had this habit of when I start to work on, I, have, I like to have a tidy environment before I start working. Um, so like when I come into this shop, I always get all my tools and put them in the right places before I start working. That way I know where they're at. Same thing for when I was working on the Jeep. I would put my tools on the, my makeshift workbench so I know, and I, I'm getting to the point, trust me. Um, I would put all my tools on my workbench just so I knew, okay, I got, there it is. You know, I don't have to run out to the shop, this shop or the other shop to get my tools. Well, I lost my pliers. Imagine that, right? <laughs> I got, I knew they weren't in the Jeep. I just knew. I said, um, they, they can't be in the Jeep. I, I just used them doing this one thing over here. They weren't on my workbench. They weren't in either of my shops. Um, I just, I said, well, I'll just have to find me a new set. So I just stopped looking for them. And then, I mean, I looked for days. I mean, uh, I, I looked for days. They, they weren't anywhere. I knew they weren't in the Jeep. Um, I convinced myself that I had lost them so much that I didn't even think to look underneath the seats in the Jeep. I knew in my head they were probably in the Jeep, but I had convinced myself that they weren't because I always tidy and I always put things back where they go. We do this in life. We, we convince, or we think that we've lost our faith. We think that we've lost our peace. We think that we've lost our identity, our confidence, our worth. Um, but we never stop to look right where we know it is, where we left it. Um... And, you know, we're bad to blame people um, and accuse uh, situations for lost things. And uh, we search relentlessly to find them uh, in all the wrong places, in all the wrong people, in all the wrong ideas. Um, but I guarantee, just like I did with the Jeep and my pliers, I guarantee if you slow down, you find that focus, and you sit there and think, you take a deep breath, and then most importantly, you look right beside you because there stands, stands Jesus, the Savior of the universe. And you would see that all that you need resides in Him. Now, all that you have lost will be restored, uh, guaranteed. And my last point is in that, that God promises protection of the Holy Spirit. God promises peace and healing God promises to fight for you and God promises to answer your prayers so find your focus prepare and rest in knowing that everything's going to be alright I love you guys see you later